Hello everybody and welcome to this new special episode on the survival on Triton. It's a special episode because it's entirely dedicated to the build of uh, a new crane with Marmo S robotic arm. So let's go outside and let's start working on that. First thing I will do is to add uh, more space on the roof so I will remove the um, armor blocks, carve a little bit and make space for the conveyor line. So here I'm I have already carved with the mining drone and uh, now I am removing the extra blocks, armor blocks on top so that I can uh, make space for the conveyor line. And here I'm placing some blocks where it's needed. Very quick, flying around. I just wanted to show how to do it. And there we are, welding up the additional space. As you can see now, this roof is a little bit higher than the rest of the base. So here the conveyor line will pass without occupying extra space. There we are, flying around to the new space just made. So here you can appreciate how this part of the old crane was made. There are vertical rotors as well as horizontal placed rotors. These um, two vertical rotors are there to keep um, the crane straight. Sometimes it disaligns and that together with the piston that pushed against uh, the binary or the, the rail where the crane moves allows it to stay um, let's say parallel. So here we are going to add the new crane. As you can see I will place a normal square block so it will be merged to the main grid. Then I will use the um, last door blocks that as you know have a gap. So this way by just removing the regular square block I can separate the rest from the main grid. Great, so at the very end of uh, this side of the crane that will add the forward and backward movement, we will add uh, horizontal rotors, a couple of them, that end, and the one, the next one on the other end. I'm counting the spaces, you know, it has to be symmetrical. But you will see in a few seconds that actually this design was wrong because this binary is touching the roof and wouldn't allow me to put the cart or the part of the crane that will move uh, sideways, so left and right, so to speak. Anyways, I'm just showing uh, this part because everyone can make a mistake, I guess. Okay, so here you can see I have already slightly modified the design. The welding arm is help me, helping me welding this part. We have um, sloped blocks right behind uh, the rotors. And this way I will also have a gap, as you can see here. That part that... Mm, connects this side of the um, of the rating system of the crane to the other side it has a gap of one block and on top of it there will be another cart that will move on this other railing a railing that is moving along with the crane and this way it's gonna be very compact and the two rails will allow me to keep the cart uh, straight Okay, so here you can see I have also added this uh, line of uh, blast door blocks in order to keep uh, the right distance and avoiding the crane to disalign and fall down, making a lot of damage as you can imagine. And also here in the middle I had added those pistons with uh, a wheel in order to lock the crane into a position. You will see then uh, another modification where this 
um, picture disappears, but I think I will re-add it in the end because it's useful for um, a specific reason. When the rotors move um, above 1.5 RPM, you cannot just lock them. They won't stop. So either you reduce the speed and then you stop, or otherwise you use a braking system like this. It's now time to build a cart that will move sideways and as you can see I'm using the regular uh, armor block in order to merge it to the main crane system at least for now until I build the wheels and all the rest. As I realized that the railing system was too tight I had to redo this part and as you can see now it's five blocks wide also I'm using again blast doors to leave a gap right below the rotors so I can separate them from the main um, crane system with these. Then there are other blast doors block below the cart in this uh, spacing we have left so that the crane, uh, the cart won't move uh, sideways and fall down again causing a lot of damage to the base or eventually your ships. Another important aspect of this crane system is the conveyor lines. As you can see, I've built um, the first part of it. It will merge to the wall. And uh, this conveyor line uh, consists of uh, conveyor tubes as well as hinges that, as you know, are conveyored. So all this will connect to this side of the crane. And then I will add another line of conveyor tubes with hinges that will connect to the cart over there. This will allow us to get components from the main grid from the base without having to reload anything. Alright, so now things are welded. As you can see we have the rotors that I am renaming and displacing a little bit inwards to align with the uh, binaries below. So I think we can eventually already separate that car from the main grid, like so. And also prepare the conveyor junction here that will connect to the rest of the base. Sorry, I went to sleep a little bit because it's a long process to build these kind of things. Let's get back to work. Alright, so building more hinges to finish this conveyor line. And uh, it's a very important aspect to put in the right strength to uh, the hinges. Because to keep them a little bit in in a regular or a straight position you need them to apply uh, a slight amount of force in this guy in this case it's 20k newtons avoid uh, higher strengths because when you reload the game as it happened to me a lot of times the conveyor lines might just explode another difficult aspect is to merge that conveyor line to the main grid as you will see here, I'm using a piston to slightly move the hinge at the same height of the other part of the hinge. And then you will need to increase a little bit the force in order to uh, overlap them, like so. Then I can go there, attach the head, done. It's now merged to the main grid. That's a fantastic thing. Um, you can try other ways of doing that, but this is, to my experience, a reliable way of doing that. Using pistons to align, and then using the same hinges, apply more force to overlap them and merge. As you can see, now I'm testing the forward and backward movement of the crane. Seems to be working. Very nice. 
but no, I made a mistake. The conveyor line is too short. As you can see, I've reached the limit and there's still way to go to the end of the base. So let's get back and repeat. Okay, added also the other line after fixing uh, the forward and backward uh, conveyor line. Now we have the side um, conveyor system that connects to the cart and to uh, the main train. Now we can again separate the cart because I had to merge it back again and test the movement of this cart. Turn on the rotors. It's not moving. I did something wrong. And the wrong part was to add this rotor before separating the car from the main grid as it merged to the railing system. Now it's moving. No, it's not. Why? It's because the car did a separate grid. I haven't merged the conveyor line. That's why. And then the battery is now moving. Great. So this uh, was a little bit easier for some reason, maybe for because of the weight. I didn't need to push this hinge just this way merged without any problem. Now testing the cart side movement with the uh, conveyor tubes and hinges attached and everything seemed to be fine. Great. Now time to build the actual uh, robotic arm. We will start by placing conveyors. Below them uh, hinges will be placed. All right, so here we have central uh, conveyor junction as well as uh, curved conveyor tubes or you can just use conveyor junctions is the same. You might wonder why we are using multiple hinges for the same movement and it's because of uh, probably a bug that won't allow you to use more strength when they are placed as subgrades like so. After the three hinges here I've built a series of conveyor junctions and as you can see we need to merge them using merge blocks. To further explain this part, each uh, conveyor junction is connected to its respective hinge, then it's a separate subgrid. Just as a demonstration here, you can see this uh, conveyor junction moving independently. We are now ready to add the first piston together with another series of conveyor tubes and hinges. And this time only two are sufficient to lift the rest of the arm. This is the second piston that it's oriented forward instead of downwards. And then we will attach the head of the crane. That will move the head left and right and then up and down. I made another mistake that the second part of the arm was uh, sideways was badly oriented so here I'm welding again the correct version of the crane with the hinges moving up and down and then left and right and finally the rotor that will keep the head oriented as you wish all right we are almost there building the programmable block uh, as far as I know you have to build a dedicated one for each um, marmoes um, thingy you have. So in this case it's crane 2. You get the code from the workshop, then search with MomOS, copy the code to the editor. We will have to modify the code before it works. So I'm just compiling an empty version and then I will copy uh, more or less the code from the original crane doing the necessary modifications. Talking about misadventures, I realized that at a certain point the crane stopped 
for uh, apparently no reason but there was a reason this little thing here it's a flying isolated microscopic voxel it's even hard to point at it uh, come on come on come on Ugh. I know, I know, it's a hard part, but in this episode I won't go in detail about this. Just keep in mind it's very important to name each element of the crane uh, with a unique name in order to properly build the arm. I had to make a couple of modifications, given the experience I had with the other one was not uh, too much time, but here you can see. I have configured another remote control and I can finally move it correctly even if the camera had to be attached actually to uh, the rotor head and not the rotor itself. So we have finally finished the build. You can see now it has its own small grid welders and some lights and it's working pretty good. So we will probably get rid of the older version next time. So that's uh, the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye bye.